Well, you wanted the man to speak. Yeah. He spoke. What did we think of what A.J. Brown had to say yesterday? Uh, I enjoyed what he had to say. You saw after the game, this was a follow-up where he didn't talk to anybody. He said he wasn't talking uh, after the game. He was frustrated and different things of that nature. He walked out on the media. He then apologized to the entire team for what he did of not speaking to the media for the standpoint of, he said it, it affects everybody. Because when I don't speak now, guys are having to answer questions about my actions and what my thoughts possibly could be. So I respect that from him, especially the apologizing to the team part. Because making sure the locker room is okay is always first and foremost for any football player. And then you listen to the things he said. You do put a lot into that, and so does everybody that's probably watching that clip. Whatever job you have, no matter how much money you make, anything that you do that you're passionate about, you're putting a ton of work in. Different is A.J. Brown has to answer questions immediately after it doesn't work. So I understand the frustrations of after the game not talking about those things. But as you look at this Eagles team and you hear the things that he's saying, you hear the passion come out of his voice and how much it means to him as he says a curse word and apologizes right after mm -hmm. This is a veteran-led team that has been there before. How do they respond amongst all this? Because this has gone on for weeks, and they haven't been able to put their finger on it and figure out exactly what it is to turn this thing around. So A.J. Brown talking to the media, saying all the right things in regards to the frustration of the team. And, yes, he is singled out because he's one of the best players on the team. He's a leader on that football team. He's a high-paid guy on that team. So the camera does go to him as soon as something bad happens. That's, the, that's what you have to live with in the position that he's in. So now how you respond when and what you do it. So yes, he said all the right things yesterday in the media. Now, how do they go out there this weekend and play a football right. game? Is the offense clicking on better levels? Are they trying to force AJ to ball now because of everything that's gone on? And does that backfire? So many eyeballs are going to be on Philly, on AJ, and the whole nine, especially on the offensive side of the ball, because there's expectations a lot higher than what we've seen from the defense. I'm really impressed by A.J. Brown. That's big boy stuff right there. Mm -hmm. That's big boy stuff before the playoffs, getting in front of it with a thousand microphones in your face, a thousand cameras. This is a small town kid who was then playing for the Tennessee Titans. Now he's got the entire Philadelphia media base in his face. And he was accountable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he was accountable. Uh, you know, he showed the outside world as well as the media that you know, all that speculation about all the turmoil. I know, guys, it's on me. Like, I, I, yes, it's on us, the players. It's not on Nick. And to be supportive of Nick Sirianni where... I can tell you in the local Philadelphia market, there's not a lot of people supportive of Nick Sirianni right now. Okay. Same thing with Brian Johnson, who we referenced, who's the offensive coordinator. And I, I thought that was really mature, big boy stuff. And it kind of deflates this balloon of this pressure bubble right there. where It's like, we understand, like, self-awareness. We get it. We know what's going on. Um, before the season started, we did the same segment probably 30 times in the offseason. Who has more pressure on them this season to succeed? The Cowboys or the Eagles? Mm -hmm. As the season is going on, I can't help but think the pressure bubble in Philadelphia was so immense. They were 10 and 1 at one point, and we were doing segments on the show. What's wrong with the Eagles? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine every day? You're 10 and 1, and we're doing. So eventually, we were right. things did unravel yeah. a little yeah. bit, right? We like, right. they did unravel. Now, can you put it back together, like you said? But big boy stuff. I don't know if I've ever been more. As AJ Brown said, huge games. I don't know if I've ever been more impressed than seeing him just answer mm -hmm. and sit, stand in front of those cameras and do that yesterday. I totally agree with you. I thought the same way. We, we, Maybe you're living a time now, maybe it's just me, where you see some athlete makes a long speech and you're just ready to poke holes in it. I don't know, that's great. What do they say? No notes? <laughs> the note would be, no, let's go make some plays. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, this is great. You can make a great speech. Don't go lose to the Giants this weekend. It, it's, it's confounding because the locker room seems really good and the yeah. coach relationship yeah. is really good. Yeah. So I keep looking for blame. Where is the rash of injuries that is brought to this? Where mm. is the fist fight in the lock? There's none of that. Yeah. What happened? Because... You, you know, we've said the defense can't stop anybody. This defense held Miami to 17 points. This defense held Kansas City to 17 points. We have not had the guys wiped out. It is not like, oh, we lost this guy and this guy. No. It's not like we don't like Sirianni. They love Sirianni. We don't like Jalen. They love Jalen. So that's the most frustrating part for us or if you're a Philly fan. There's nothing to point to. There's no one to harass on social media. There's no one's Wikipedia page to deface. There's no <laughs> meme other than... At one point, we just stopped being able to win, and now we can't beat anybody, and everybody's waiting for us to go one and done in the playoffs because if you just look at the last six weeks, we look like the 10th best team in the NFC. Maybe 12th. I, I, I don't know. Generous. I mean, listen, I know they're better than the they Panthers lost to the Cardinals and maybe the Falcons. And they so lost to the Cardinals and Seahawks. Who are you like? Oh, they're better than them. I don't know. And the, the, my takeaway is I don't know why. I, unless they just got old fast, but... Come on, what are we talking about? We're reaching. This is confounding to me, and I'm trying to come up with reasons where, like, they can flip the switch. 
We've been waiting for six weeks for them to flip this way. I don't get it. It's very frustrating. The Eagles can still win the NFC East, to Kyle's point. The two seed in the NFC with a win against the Giants and, in addition to, a Cowboys loss to the Commanders. That's how that could go for an Eagles playoff scenario. Mm-hmm. How does this look moving forward? All right. Jason. Where, on, Jay. AJ you- said all the right things. There was something that stuck out to me, though, when he started talking about the play against Seattle where it's late in the game and they're driving. They have a chance to go down and actually win the game, and they have the ball on offense. And Jalen Hurts throws this one deep. He's trying to find A.J. Brown deep down the sideline. Didn't need it in this situation. Only needed a field goal. Julian Love goes up, makes an incredible interception. Credit to Julian Love. But I want you guys to take a listen to what A.J. Brown had to say about this play yesterday. Like for the Seattle game, that was on us. Like we we messed that up. We 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 improvised and we went on our own. And Nick came out and said, "Oh, I I, I wanted uh, to try to get a flag or something, something crazy like that." It's like he really made himself look like look look like a, a fool for us. I have nothing but respect for him. Like you know what I'm saying? Cause not all coaches do that. You know what I'm saying? So like, bro, bro, we rhyme with Nick. We rhyme with Brian. We just gotta come out. We just gotta play ball. I love that. So do I. Nick's supporting him. They support, they're supporting him, vice versa. My issue with, all right, we're late in the game. <laughs> Is there a lack of trust in the play calling? Because why are we improvising at that point in the game? We just need a field goal, and we're moving the ball on offense that we feel the need that we can just go and do our own thing and make a play. I think those are the question marks, Kyle, when you start to say, well, what is it about yeah. this team? Is it when you reach a certain level of success where it's like, all right, well, now I know I can do X, Y, and Z. I can make this happen. Or, hey, on this one, I know we're trying to do this play to the left. Hey, just throw it up to me. I'm going to go make a play for you. So I think those are the things that you're starting to possibly see, Kareem. I'm not in locker room but just listening to it late in the game where you need your best execution to say we're improvising at that given point is a little confusing so there's a thing online that, that's been amusing me this week and you're trying to build some positivity for the eagles we've been very negative like how can you build this thing up the sentiment is how can a team that is playing this badly and losing this much get in the playoffs and just turn it around it's never happened it has happened So a lot of people have sent me this, including James Nagel online. I want you to look at the symmetry between this year's Eagles right now and a very famous Ravens team. All right, week 12, win in overtime. This is the 2012 Ravens went on to win the Super Bowl with Joe Joe Flacco. Loss, 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 win, loss. (laughs) It's perfectly symmetrical. That Ravens team on the left was playing like crap. And they had nothing. And everyone online, I've looked, I went back and looked at it. It was like, one and done. This team has nothing. They don't have it. They're, they're crawling to the end line. This is the same exact thing that the Eagles have done. And I went back and looked at quotes from everybody from Marshall Yonda to at Al. All they're saying is stuff like AJ saying, we got to stick together. We got to make plays. Do you want to know what happened to this Ravens team right after that? Roll it. Because they went on a run of all runs. This is Flacco against the Andrew Luck Colts. They went and beat them. This AFC that the the Flacco Ravens went through was much more loaded than the NFC that's waiting for the Eagles because then we went against Peyton in Denver. Peter, remember this game? Mm -hmm. Raheem Moore game. They beat them. And then they're like, wow, that's a crazy run for a team that ended the season like crap. Well, then they got to go against the big dogs in Foxborough. They beat them. They get to the Super Bowl. They beat a really good Niners team. The coach beats his brother. The lights go out. They did all of that with the same exact path to the playoffs that this Eagles this team is taking. So the question be, begets itself, what if? What if the bright lights just come on? And what if the playoffs come on? And what if they'd say, all right, now we got it out. We, this feels familiar. We've been here. We've been deep in here before. And just like that Flacco Ravens scene, they start making plays and gelling, and they go on a run. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm saying it has happened and not that long ago. Okay. That's a good take. I love it. The counter, of course, which is what we do at this show, the counter is last year the Buccaneers were defending Super Bowl champions. They petered out at the end of regular season. They go and they play Dallas in a playoff game, and they get blown out, and it's over. Like, <laughs> it could happen that quickly too, right? And to me, it's, all right, you've got this one week against the Giants. Forget about it. Whoever cares. It's basically they're not. The Cowboys aren't going to lose to the Commanders. You're the five seed. You have to go to Tampa and beat a Buccaneers team. I think I would take this Eagles team over Tampa right now mm-hmm. in Tampa. Mm. And then it's the next week. And then it's divisional round. And that's Why, everything. On. Why would you take them over Tampa? I would take them over. Tampa just lost to New Orleans. I think Tampa. Tampa. Uh, Philly just lost to Arizona. Though. I, I think the, Air, the <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles beat them in Monday Night Football. Mm-hmm. Kicked the snot out of them down yeah. there. Mm-hmm. I would take them. If I'm picking right now, okay. it might change if we lead up to it. Mm-hmm. Divisional round, if they win the first round, 
they're going to have to go to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Is it a failure of a season if you get to the divisional round? Yes. You think it's a failure? Definitely. And that's where I'm like, because I don't know if they're getting past San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this team... There's something we call the eye test. There's a reason when they're 10 and 1, we start the show and say, what's wrong with the mm-hmm. Eagles? It's the eye te- they don't have it with the eye test. Yeah. Whether it's the backyard football that they're playing and they think they could do green light and all that stuff, whether it's they just lost the mojo and need to find it, this Eagles team doesn't pass the eye test right now. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe we'll use this clip and maybe this makes them put the dog masks on. <laughs> I hope they find it. I like when the Eagles are the Eagles because they've got this big bravado and they represent the city so well. But right now, they don't look the same they did as last year or the 2017 Eagles or... In mm-hmm. your case, the 2012 Ravens, which mm-hmm. I thought, you know, Ray Lewis got those guys going when it nat- But they can, like, you can't get uninjured. You can get the mojo back. Fair. It's happening. Yeah. Like, you can't yeah. all of a sudden start to like each other when you hate each other. Mojo can come and go. They don't have injury problems. They don't have leadership problems. They just have mojo problems. Yes. You know, that's happening. the only thing I got.